Okay, sorry, I gotta do this quick video. Hopefully it'll be quick. I referred a lot to Hebrews 7.28 in my audios on God Deeds versus Good Deeds, and I need to show that the verse, unfortunately, is mistranslated slightly. And I need to show where it's mistranslated so you don't get the wrong idea. If you look quickly at Hebrews 7, in any translation, it's talking about why the Mosaic Law is set aside and why Christ is the mediator of a better covenant, which is the theme of Hebrews 7 and 8, really 9 and 10 also. He really began the idea back in Hebrews 3, and he's tracing it out through the chapters. Okay, that's the overall context. Hebrews 7.28 is building, he's, he's showing the logic of why this had to be done. Why was the Mosaic Law set aside? Why do we have a new covenant? That's the whole theme of the whole book. And he's trying to show the new covenant is an upgrade on the Mosaic Law. The Mosaic Law was completed by Christ, and now the law is Christ. Alright, that's the whole point. And most of us kind of understand that, but when you go to read the Bible, unfortunately, because there are slight mistranslations in every verse, the whole pattern of the verse and the whole pattern of the text gets confusing. Here, I want to show you a simple thing that the, all the translations are doing wrong, that you just excise this one clause and the verse will make a whole lot more sense, okay? Because the clause that's in here is not in the Greek. This is the clause that does not belong. Now, I'm going to read, that's the NASB translation that, that's highlighted. I'm going to read the text in the NASB without that clause and just hear it. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak, but the word of the oath appoints a son made perfect forever. See how much sense that makes? Now, if you were to look earlier in the context of that chapter, the word of the oath is talking about Psalm 110. I will point you high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was during Abraham's day. The whole point of this chapter is to show that there is a precedence for a higher kingship that predates Israel, and that's why church gets to exist. That's what he's explaining. And you can vaguely get that idea if you read the chapters, you know, the book over 9,000 times, okay? Unfortunately, I had really good teaching from my pastor, so I understood this like without having to read it 9,000 times. But when you read it in translation, you have to keep on doing it over and over unless you had somebody properly teach it so that you know how it's organized. Here, when he's talking about the word of the oath, if you look back in Hebrews 7, maybe I can do that quickly here. Okay, let me get rid of the lexicon. See? For it is attested of him your high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. That's Psalm 110. He's been quoting from Psalm 110 since Hebrews chapter 1. So he's threading the psalm throughout his writing. And what he's stressing here is the precedence of Psalm 110 in creating a second, what you know, first in order, in chronological order, but second in realization order kingdom. Christ is king of the Jews, that's separate. This is Kata Melchizedek order in Psalm 110 pre-Israel. This was done at the beginning of time. That David is, is reciting something that he learned from God, that God the Father said to God the Son at the beginning of time. This is an award to defeat Satan. And Satan is actually mentioned in clever language called Womb of the Dawn in Psalm 110. So it's about defeating Satan. Satan's title was Morning Star, okay. Christ is the new Morning Star replacing Satan. I covered that in my audio. Okay, but here he's referencing that same passage to show the church is deriving from this prior promise. It is not deriving from Israel. It is a second covenant of its own. Okay, so he's saying that you are priest forever, Kata Melchizedek. Okay, and then he goes in. The law didn't make any perfect. There's bringing in of a better hope. This is Christ, through which we draw near to God. And it wasn't without an oath. 
the oath is right here. Okay, he started to introduce the oath. Oh, please, mouse work. He started to introduce the oath right here. God made a promise to Abraham. The men swear by someone greater than themselves, but God doesn't have anyone greater to swear by than himself. Okay, see, right here. He promised to Abraham, I will multiply you. That's to Abraham, not to Christ, to Abraham. But he's setting up a parallel. God gives an oath. Okay? So God gave an oath to show the unchangeableness of his purpose, interposed with an oath. See, this is how you know. Do not be anti Semitic. So, by unto unchangeable things, God in his own oath, we who have taken refuge, we have strong encouragement. Okay, so the first strong encouragement is well, God made an oath to Abraham. One sided, just, hi, I'm going to do this. Abraham didn't have to do anything. God was just going to do it. It's a flat, unconditional covenant, as they call it in theology. Okay, well, God had made another oath right here. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek, not Israel. That's what this whole chapter is about. He's not even eligible to be a priest. See? He's not even eligible. The priesthood changed. There's the change of law also. I mean, you have to read the whole chapter. I can't, you know. See? He wouldn't need, the Lord wouldn't even be a priest under the Levitical priesthood. So it's not related to Israel. That's the point. The Israel, if it was related to Israel, it would be Levitical priesthood. The Lord would not be a priest then, because he's not of the right tribe. But instead, he's a high priest forever caught in Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a priest while Abram was still alive. And God did make a promise to Abram, but that was a sworn oath to Abram. But this isn't a, this isn't said to Abram. This is said to Christ, pre, you know, before time even begins. All right. You are priest forever, kind of Melchizedek. So also Jesus is a guarantee of a better covenant. So now we come to 728 again. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak. But, and this should be capitalized, this word word meaning whole logos. Let me show you. Oh, just when I get a dramatic moment, my computer slows down. Okay, whole logos, right here. Hologos, we all know that means Christ. The Word was God, the Word was with God. We all know that. Okay? I gotta go right to left again. Isn't that funny? Okay? So the Word of the Oath. Here's the, here's the Word of the Oath in Greek. That should be capitalized as a title of Him. He's the Word of the Oath. After the Law. Not which came after the Law. He precedes the Law. There, this whole phrase, which came after, which came, that doesn't belong there. The, the translators are all inserting it. They're misunderstanding the passage when they translated it. The word of the oath, after the law, son. And the, they're getting the word of points from here. Got this to me. That's the word of points. In Greek, you don't repeat the verb again. This is called a double accusative right here. Naman, it also made a takes the accusative also, that's why it's kind of confusing. Naman, as accusative, means law. Huion is also accusative and means son. Okay, the verb that they're referring back to is this, a points. But the trouble that they're having here is meta takes the accusative. So this is one phrase that belongs back to the word of the law, the, the word of the oath after the law, son. What it's saying very deftly here, because it doesn't repeat the word appoints, and they get the idea that they're supposed to say appoint. See, it's in italics here, but it, it's it's right. That's right. Okay, the King James instead of saying appoint says makes. That's okay. Okay, that verb applies. It is the object of a points where they're getting it wrong is the oath doesn't come after the law. He just finished saying it came in the past under Psalm 110. I'm going to make you high priest Kata Melchizedek. Melchizedek preceded Israel. Melchizedek was alive during Abraham. So the oath doesn't come after the law. This whole which came is completely wrong. 
to strike it from your translation, whichever translation you have. This which was, there's no, there's no Greek text that says that. It's saying the word of the oath after the law. Those are the exact words right here in Greek. The word of the oath after the law. Yeah, the word of the oath was really before the law. The promise was before the law. But Christ is born in his humanity, what? Under the law. After the law. He's born after the law begins. But his promise about Melchizedek is before he's born. So, he is born after the law, right? But he's appointed, got this to me right here, son. That's the accusative case, direct object. And this the rest of it says, forever made perfect. Forever the, Made perfect isn't really the, quite the best thing to say. It's to perfect the contract and it means to complete. Made complete forever is the way you ought to translate that. But perfect as a verb is a legal verb in English, so it's not really a mistranslation. Made complete forever is how you need to understand it because unless you know legal language. Okay, because he's talking about the law, so they're using the legal meaning of the word to perfect a contract, meaning to complete a contract. The contract of God to make sons is completed in Christ. That's the point. And it's based on a previous promise in Psalm 110, you will be high priest forever, Kata Melchizedek, according to the order of Melchizedek. That was promised before Israel existed. That's the whole point of this verse. Anyway, if I don't make sense, yell at me.